Well, what a way to um, end the time of worship, although we're continuing to worship in what we do, because worship is a lifestyle. But to hear that story of a healing of that brain, that brain tumor, that's absolutely phenomenal. And that that happened here in the worship is, is just brilliant. And we want to hear more stories of what God is doing because God is working among us, among us and sometimes we forget what he's doing or we don't share what he's doing. We need to be talking about the good stuff, not the rubbish that's going on. Let's have good news. Let's have good stories to tell. So I want to welcome everyone who's here, especially if you're here for the first time or if you're visiting, uh, we want to feel relaxed. Please stay for refreshments after. It would be great to chat to you <coughs> and get to know you. But we're in a series about prayer and really how to make prayer accessible, just to understand prayer. Two weeks ago, Roger spoke on the subject of why pray? And we were looking at how prayer is a conversation and then we looked last week when I spoke at uh, prayer changes things. And so this week I want to look at how we can pray, how we can get creative with all kinds of prayer. And, and I'm just talking about kind of more speaking out prayer. Um, there, there's lots to be said, but I'm just going to be talking about a few things. Everyone knows that when an artist paints a picture, they're using a palette board loaded with different colors, multiple colors. Or a musician, when they write a song, they're using different chords and rhythms and instruments and harmonies to accompany a melody. <coughs> or someone who's a cook, a chef, they use various ingredients in many ways, different methods of cooking to create a variety of dishes. And so with prayer, there's different kinds of prayer that we can have. That's good news, isn't it? It's not just one type of prayer. Prayer doesn't have to be bland and boring. It shouldn't be boring because we're talking to God. Prayer is something we can grow in and experiment with. It's not a monochromic activity, but it's a multicolored, multidimensional activity because of what's happening. Prayer is, as we said, it's, it's relational interaction, a conversation between us and God. It involves speaking and listening and can be done with different emotions, uh, emotions and intensities, with different volumes. It can be spoken, it can be sung. Prayer involves faith, be it the, the tiniest speck of faith, which Jesus likened to the size of a mustard seed that has the potential to move a mountain because when you pray, it's God getting involved. Often people think they couldn't achieve anything significant by praying. They couldn't achieve anything, maybe, by praying. But I want to ask you a question. How many of you think that you could move or lift in some way 15,000 kilograms, 15 tons in a week? Does that seem doable? Just, just shout out, does it seem doable, yes or no? How many think yes? We, we just have one. How many think no? All the rest of you think no, okay. Well, you know, I probably would have agreed with you until yesterday, um, because about three weeks ago I started weight training. And my personal trainer, Luciano, Luciano, there he is, um, he kindly set me up with a three-day plan that I keep repeating with a day off. So I'm kind of doing six days in the week of lifting weights. And all I have is dumbbells. And all that's on them is six kilos on each side. I mean, after a while they get heavy, but it's just six kilos on each side, okay? And I was in the shower after my exercise yesterday thinking, how much have I lifted? Because my app kind of counts it up. And I thought, how much have I lifted in a week? And when I added it up, I'd realized I'd lifted 15,000 kilograms, 15 tons. I would never, ever have thought that if you just said, would you lift that? And I bet you wouldn't have thought that, that you could lift a volume, lifting it up, exercising in different ways. And that's the same as prayer. I was thinking about this, how this is the same as prayer. 
that so often we think it's impossible to pray and see things shift. But if we get in the way of praying, what things might be moved? Prayer involves the, the Spirit of God, God's Holy Spirit praying with us, helping us in our weakness when we don't know what to pray. And it makes a difference when we pray. It all adds up. So every prayer is making a difference. Prayer is powerful and can change things, whereas a lack of prayer, no prayer, will see nothing changed. And so while prayers may or may not be answered, when and how we want, God still hears us and is working everything together for our good. So in Ephesians 6 verse 18, it says this, it says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And that's what I want to talk on, all kinds of prayers. In other words, we see there's different kinds of prayers for different kinds of situations. It's amazing, isn't it? A, a number of years ago, um, we were in a church and someone decided to hold an art evening where everyone could come and explore having a go at different kinds of art, different media, you know, drawing, painting, just a variety of things. And uh, the expectation was that you did not have to have any skill, any artistic ability. You just went and had a go. And so I went along and I absolutely loved it because I started painting with acrylic paint, which you can have quite a texture on and leave all these lumps on. So it's not a flat picture, which I'd always done. It, it had substance to it. I really enjoyed it. And I've tried it every now and again, every now and again over the years. But when I look at paintings in shops, you know, the expensive few thousand ones, I think, what's the difference between them and me? Because we've got a canvas, we've got paint, we've got brushes, we've got a willing person. It's just what they've done is they have persisted in learning what to do. And they create this beautiful piece of artwork. And prayer is just about persisting, persisting. And as we do that, we grow. Just like with lifting weights, we get stronger, we get more confident. And so, what we're going to do this morning is just have a look at the colors on the palette or the ingredients to cook that we can use in prayer for the situations that we face in life. <coughs> so we're going to look at this verse, a few verses from Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends, it passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. One of the key things about prayer is honesty. So often we pray just because we're in a difficult situation. Help! Help me, God! Oswald Chambers, who I referenced last week, he said this, we pray when there's nothing else we can do. Jesus wants us to pray before we do anything at all. Often we get in messy situations and we pray help. God's saying, why not talk to me? Let's do this together. And so just as with exercising, if we can get into a habit of cultivating, developing a prayer life every day, we're going to be the stronger for it. We're going to have a, a much greater trust in God. And when we pray, let's recognize this. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. That's a crucial thing to understand because so often what we do is we hold our feelings to be the truth. And we judge things by our feelings to be real. But God is truth, and the truth is God is real even when he seems distant. Often when we feel broken and crushed, we believe that God does not care or can't be bothered. But Psalm 34 verse 18 says this, 
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's the truth. So even when we're facing these overwhelming feelings we're facing, we need to remind ourselves of the truth. The Lord is near. He's listening. 1 Peter 3 verse 12 says this, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive. They're open to their prayer. He's watching. He's listening. And he's there for you. And so when we pray, we must get this mindset in front of us. Otherwise, all we're going to do is focus on the trouble. trouble. Again, Oswald Chambers said this. He said, when we, we have to pray with our eyes on God, not in the difficulties. We bring the difficulties to God, but we pray with our eyes on God, who will help us. We look forward. We look upward. You know when you see on those movies when someone's in peril and there's like a, a tiny thing to walk on or you know wh whatever it is and they're saying look at me or they've got to jump look at me just look at me don't look down they're holding on to a skyscraper don't look down look at me listen to my voice that's what God does that's what prayer is he's there to help us and so he's saying do not be anxious about anything verse 6 stop worrying stop negative meditating going over your mind, all those kinds of scenarios and things that might have been said, or the accusations, or the threats. Satan is the accuser, and he'll accuse you, he'll blame you, he'll even distract you, just like he did with Jesus when, when Peter said to Jesus, out of good motive, that's not going to happen to you, Jesus. And Jesus turns to Peter and says, get behind me, Satan, because you have in mind the things of men, not of God. So worry is, I've, I've said before, worry is negative meditating. However, we're called to meditate on God's truth, on his word. Do not be anxious about anything because God is near and he's for you. But in every situation, every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So I want to look at, quickly, 10 different kinds of prayer in the Bible, okay? Now, there's verses I'll jump to. Uh, we won't have them up because otherwise that was going to be a lot of work putting it together. But I'm going to give you the 10 points, and they're in Portuguese too. So I hope I've done the right translation. If not, blame Google Translate, okay? So the first one is this. Prayers of adoration. Prayers of worship, of adoration. This kind of prayer is just focus on the Lord out of deep love and respect and admiration. It, it comes from a place of genuine awe and recognizing who God is in all that he does. You might speak to God his names because names have meanings. They, they mean things. So Jesus, what does Jesus mean? He saves the Lord saves. So when we say Jesus, we're not just saying Jesus, we're saying you are the saviour, you're the rescuer, the deliverer. And so you might speak his names, his attributes, his character. What are some of the characteristics that we can talk about him? He's the creator. God, you're the creator, you're the saviour. You are eternal, you are holy, there's no one like you. You never change, you're immutable, that's what that means. You are just. You're always right. You know everything. In other words, you're omniscient. You're all-powerful. You're omnipotent. You're compassionate, kind, faithful. And you can just go on and on using different adjectives to talk to the Lord about. When you do that, your understanding of who God is begins to grow and your hope that God can do something in your life begins to grow. It's always good to start with who God is. When Jesus did the Lord's Prayer, he began saying, our Father who is in heaven. He spoke of relationship. Isaiah 25 verse 1 says, Lord, you are my God and I will exalt you and praise your name for in your perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things. Second thing is prayers of thanksgiving. 
Psalm 107 says that we need to give thanks to the Lord for He's good. And so we need to be thankful for who He is and thankful for what He's done and thankful for what He will do. Being around thankful people is attractive, isn't it? Who likes being around thankful people? I do, I love it. It stirs something in me. And when we're thankful to God, He loves it, it stirs something in Him. And so, thinking of those prayers of adoration, they can then link into prayers of thanksgiving, like a springboard, like you're diving into a pool. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you said you'd be with me in every situation. Thank you, Lord, that today, when I faced this situation, I was not alone. You were with me, you were near me, and you helped me. You made the way possible for such and such to happen. Thankfulness. God loves thankfulness, be it general or specific. Prayers of gratitude are often prompted by answered prayers. We heard Ruth share about her story. It will have brought thanksgiving. You could hear the thankfulness coming from her, couldn't you, as she gave praise and honor to God. I will give thanks to the Lord, Psalm 9-1. Rachel started off, I give, started off today with this. I give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I tell of your wonderful deeds. Then we have the third one, prayers of confession and repentance. Every day we need to confess and repent. Every day it's good to keep short accounts with God. There are things we've done that we shouldn't have, things we thought we shouldn't have, things we said we shouldn't have, and probably things we should have done, thought and said too. And all we do is we just come before God and, and, and we're sincere and we just say, Lord, will you forgive me? Will you forgive me for this? Forgive me for that and help me. It's confessing. And this keeps our relationship with God in the right place, free from condemnation and guilt. So when Satan comes and whispers, he says, you're like this, you said that, you do this. You say, I did, but God's forgiven me. I'm free, I'm free. 1 John 1 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from unrighteousness and so as we pray we don't just give thanks but we acknowledge what we've done wrong but we then thank him for his forgiveness and his goodness to us then in the fourth one, we have prayers of remembrance. Sometimes we need to get to that place where we're just quiet. Often you might be lying in bed. It's the still time and you remember. And you remember God's goodness. You remember what God has done. You might remember experiences that you want to experience again of the presence of God. In Psalm 77 verse 1, David wrote this, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God. I meditated. I thought about former days, years long ago. Verse 6, I remembered the songs in the night. And then he carries on in verse 10. Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out His hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I'll consider all your works and meditate on your mighty deeds. It's important to remember so that as you pray, you can remind yourself of what God has done and how you want to experience His presence in your life again. How you want to see those miracles and healings again today. How you want to see that provision again today. I pray like that. I want to remember. Then we have the fifth one, prayer for healing. Jesus ministered with healing. He came among us and then he said to his disciples and, and he said to his followers, to us, go lay hands on the sick, pray for those who are sick to see them healed. Go and see restoration happening, be it physical, spiritual or emotional. And we had this passage last week from James 515 is anyone of you in trouble let them pray is anyone happy let them sing songs of praise is any one of you sick let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them 
and anoint them in, with oil in the name of the Lord. It was great. I had two people call me this week to say, will you pray? We're open to pray for healing. Then number six, prayers for deliverance and help. It's kind of like petitions and requests. We, when we face difficulties and challenges, hardships, we can pray for help, for deliverance and breakthrough. We can petition God more formally and we request things informally. We can come to God, the judge of all judges, when you feel something unjust is happening. And sometimes I do that. I say, God, to you I appeal. You want, I ask you for justice in this situation. And other times I come in for me and I say, God, you're my father. Thank you that I can come in this way and know you. Psalm 34, verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. Then seven, prayers of intercession. Praying for others is an important part of being in the body of Christ and praying for the world, praying for our community, praying for our schools, for our workplaces. The Bible teaches us to pray for one another and to intercede, basically to come to God on people's behalf. And we see Jesus doing that on the last night that he had with his disciples as he did the Last Supper. And the Apostle Paul often did that, the one who wrote most of, a lot of the New Testament. And he wrote this, he said in 1 Timothy 2, verse 1, he says, I urge first of all that petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings, for all those in authority, that we might live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And the Holy Spirit we saw last week intercedes for us when we don't know how to pray. He helps us. The eighth one, the prayer of blessing. Blessings are found throughout Scripture. We had in COVID that phenomenal prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Put to music that swept the world, that was translated into language after language after language. I've never seen something like a wildfire just sweep the world like that in, in Christian circles. That song of blessing of hope being spoken out to the world. And so we're called to pray blessing on each other. And we're called to pray blessing even when things are difficult. Jesus said this in Matthew 4, verse 44. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And Romans 12, 14 says, bless those who persecute you, who cause you harm or hardship. Bless and do not curse. Why? Because you're committing them to God to deal with them. God can deal with people much better than you can, than I can. And so we hand people over. And, 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 and so I, I love praying blessing on people when things, you know, I want to encourage them or they've encouraged me. I find it harder to pray blessing on people I don't like or people who are saying bad things about me. But I've learned over the years as being a Christian, my dad used to teach us. My dad was a pastor. And he used to teach us. He'd go to churches and teach us. And he'd say, just begin to bless those people. And say, God, thank you for them. Lord, I thank you that you made them. Lord, I'm, I'm in a difficult situation. I'm, I'm not enjoying what they're doing. I'm finding it very hard. But I want you to show your goodness to them that they might see who you really are. And you just leave it with them. Suddenly you walk away free. You're not carrying the pressure of trying to put it right. You're letting God do that. Then in the, number nine, there's the prayer of faith. And I see this as like the prayer of declaration, authority. It, it, it's, we can also have the prayer of faith that just, you know, have the mustard seed of faith. But there's something about faith, the gift of faith, that has that 
sense of expectancy that's different to ordinary prayer is like there's an inward assurance by God's Spirit that the thing being prayed for is according to God's will and it's being granted. I love praying in that way. I love praying. I, I don't have lots of times when I pray like that, but when I pray, there are times I know I'm moving out of just a, a, a level of faith that I believe God can do it, where I know he's done it. And so that kind of prayer of faith needs to be done. I know there's times when I pray, I can believe God can do what's needed and trusting that he knows best. And so when we read in James 5 about healing, not all prayers seem to be answered about healing because if they were, no one would die. So clearly, even healing, though it may not be physical and it might go to the point of death, if they know Jesus, they're going to be fully healed and stand in the presence of God. And so praying for them is with that sense of faith, whatever happens, God, you're in control. It's not a cop-out, but there are times in praying for people when you know that you know it's happened. And then the final one is the prayer of consecration and dedication. This kind of prayer <coughs> is really about setting ourselves or something that we have apart specifically for God. Sometimes it might be renewing promises that we've made to God previously. Sometimes our children are dedicated to God, or a building is, or a ministry. Our money, our resources, our home, that which God has given us, we dedicate, we consecrate to God. We say, God, it's, these are for you to use. The most important thing we see in Romans 12, 1 is that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That's our true and proper worship. We consecrate ourselves. And so I want us to have a palette and think we don't have to be one-dimensional. It doesn't have to be monochromic. It doesn't have to be boring. There is texture, there is range, there's intensity, there's passion, there's quietness, there's stillness, there's distress, there's, there's all kinds of ways that we can talk to God. Let's pray. And just as I said about weight train, training, we, we would never think something is possible with prayer. Amazing things can happen. John Wimber said that the more he prayed, he was a, a, a phenomenal uh, pastor who moved in healing and signs and wonders and, and a whole movement came out of that. But at first when he prayed, nothing happened. God said, call people up for prayer and he prayed for healing, no, nothing would happen. He preached healing, he called people up, nothing would happen. Pretty embarrassing. And then someone got healed. And then he began to pray and someone more and more and more until people were praying for other people and lots of people were being healed. Now he said, if I prayed for nothing, nothing happened. But as I prayed, something began to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to have just a little bit of time of prayer. Where I'm going to ask you to look at one of those types of prayer and think, what would I like to pray to God right now? And we're going to have some music and we're going to pray. Now you can pray quietly or you can pray uh, out loud. It's up to you. Probably everyone will be embarrassed and will pray quietly. But we're going to do it. We're going to actually pray. It might be the cry of help. It might be the call for wisdom. It might be the prayer of thanksgiving, adoration. It might be um, the prayer of intercession for someone, the prayer for healing. But we're going to try and just pray together as a community. Because you know what? Lifting something heavy on your own is hard, but everyone lifting it is easy. And we're just going to let God do something today to lift something in this atmosphere. So let's stand together. And I'm just going to play some music.
don't bother about the person next to you. Of course, if you're not speaking out, you're not going to be that worried. But don't feel you don't, you can't speak out. But just quietly, just begin to pray to God. One of those kinds of prayers. come to you, Lord God. We come to you, Lord God. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Here we are for you, Lord. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 